Parametric EQ versus FFT filter, which is the best and why should you use either of them? Let's find out. I've got both open right now. Both are equalization tools. Why would you want to equalize something? Well, it's simply to make it sound better. So you might want to boost the high end, boost the low, uh, reduce some frequencies in the mid range of the voice just to uh, eliminate or enhance sounds. That's why you'd use EQ. But why would you use either? And this comes from uh, one of my students on one of my courses recently. Marissa, thank you for asking the question. If you'd like to join one of my upcoming courses about audio production, podcast production, and how to sound great, head to mrc.fm forward slash learn. So thank you, Marissa, for asking. My favorite hands down is definitely this one, the parametric equalizer. You have so much more control over what you can do. But some software, for instance, let's hop over to Audacity for a moment, only has an FFT style filter equalizer. Uh, and then if I flatten the curves, what you do is you draw points on and you make peaks and troughs and bits like that. And that's how you do things. So you can like boost frequencies, you can reduce frequencies, you can do all that kind of stuff FFT style. Just the same as I can do an audition. I can put on points here like this uh, and like this and isolate just the mid. So I'm getting rid of the high and the low end. And this is fantastic if you want to sort of isolate frequencies uh, in a voice or in a piece of music or audio you have. So with this effect and the FFT filter enabled, I'm going to get an on hold style phone voice. Hello and thank you for calling this really annoying on hold service. Let's boost that up a little bit and play it again. Hello and thank you for calling this really annoying on hold service. And you'll notice the more I move these points out to the high end, the broader the sound comes. Hello and thank you for calling this really annoying on hold service. So now really I've just uh, cut off the low end and a bit of the very, very high end. And that's really what it can do. You can't really move audio up and sweep along. It's it's not that accurate like you can do with a, a parametric equalizer. You can notch up and you can sweep along. I'll show you that in just a moment. So really, to make on hold voices, bits like that. There's some great presets in here for mastering, uh, isolating only the tweeter, isolating only the subwoofer if you want to do uh, bits like that or listen to certain parts of your mix. FFT filter is fantastic, but it's not the one that I use the most. In fact, I hardly ever use it. Uh, and I really wish that software like Audacity would include a parametric equalizer uh, because they are just so much easier to use. One other feature I'll just show you on the FFT filter is you can change the scale, although I'd leave it as logarithmic. Logarithmic essentially focuses on the frequencies you'll want to use up here. So it kind of keeps the low end down here, but you've got lots of mid range frequencies. Whereas if you go to linear, everything is kind of equal. But as you'll see in the, the curve of how audio looks, not everything is equal uh, in the sound of audio. I mean, this high end here, there's hardly anything here. So you're really losing a lot of real estate there. So always, I would suggest logarithmic. Oh, and one last thing, spline curves. What does that do? Well, if we do loads of jagged things like that, if we click spline curves, we get it nice and smooth. So that is FFT filter in a nutshell. Going to delete it, move in parametric equalizer here and enable it. So parametric equalizer for me, so much better than FFT filter. And it's the thing that I teach on my course all the time for my students to use. This is the EQ you should get to know if there's one EQ you want to learn. Uh, so how does this work? Well, I can boost up a frequency. Let's do this in real time as I play. Hello, and thank you for calling this. Okay, you can hear the mids go up, can't you? And then I can sweep along like this. Hello, and thank you for calling this really annoying on hold service. Now, obviously, I'm doing extreme EQ <laughs> just so you can hear it on this video. Um, but you can hear how you can sweep quickly through frequencies. If you've got back Add audio. This is fantastic because you can take the Q width of, uh, in this case, 0.3 here, make it really tiny. I usually go up to about 16 uh, or so, and then you've got a notch and you can notch through frequencies. Hello, and thank you for calling this really annoying on hold service. And look for those hollow frequencies and then just simply go the other way and notch out those frequencies. So really good for that. You can also add some high shelf. Uh, you can change the shape of that high shelf and like move it in. So add the sparkle. Hello and thank you for calling lovely sparkle. Uh, you can add a high pass filter. This is stuff that's really, you can do it in FFT filter. It's just harder. Uh, so I can cut out the lows. Hello and thank you for calling this really annoying on hold service. And I can scan obviously in real time. That's another good thing. Both come with a real time frequency display, which is super helpful for spotting the frequencies um, that are very prominent in your audio. 
You've got lots of different points. If you don't want them all, you can of course switch them off and only keep the points you need so you're not dragging around and clicking for loads of points. What else is worth to show you about this? Oh, another good thing uh, with this one, as opposed to FFT filter, you can actually increase the master gain. So instead of boosting frequencies, if you're taking out a lot of frequencies, you're actually going to reduce the amplitude of your audio, make it quieter. So with this master gain boost, you can sort of say, oh, I want to add on a, a 5 dB gain. And if we look at preview window there, it's obviously now distortion. So I'll take that back down because I don't want to distort my audio. Or if I'm boosting, I can actually reduce the, uh, the volume so that the audio doesn't distort. So that's another good feature. Feature. And another good feature about the parametric equalizer, why I'm saying this is my winner uh, in this uh, showdown, uh, is you can change the range from 30 dB uh, worth of boost, minus 15 to plus 15, to 96 dB, and then you can really uh, do some real heavy EQing like this. I mean, this is going to sound terrible. Whoa! But yeah, if, if you want to go nuts with your EQ, or you're doing some heavy lifting there, uh, it's really, really helpful. And then head back to default. There's some good presets in here. Old time radio is a good one. Hello, and thank you for calling. Is that warm vintage sound. Rap vocals, a lot of rappers often ask. Hello, and thank you for calling. Boosting up the high end, bit of a high pass filter as well going on. Guitar stuff, snare, a acoustic guitar, vocal enhancer, which actually uh, is not a bad preset. I probably wouldn't boost the high end as much as it is on this particular preset. But there you go. Uh, some really good templates if you want to just figure out what EQ does and uh, get stuck into it with Adobe Audition. But let me know how you get on. And uh, if you use any of the other EQ uh, features, either in Adobe Audition, in Audacity, or whatever you're using, just type in the comments. Uh, let me know what your favorite EQ is and why. And particularly if I missed out a feature of parametric or FFT filter, let me know in the comments as well. Thanks.